I think the UN Association have done a fantastic job of putting together this event um, and it's been great hearing from some of the different um, um, member bodies of this, of this organisation and seeing, seeing the, the really exciting um, projects that you're all working on. Um, I think and I hope that it was, it was really exciting to see some academic debate today I and mean, most of the audience are undergraduate students um, and they, they see lectures which are you know, academics being, being impartial on an issue. Um, and yeah, I think it's interesting for, for undergraduate students to see that academics don't always agree on things um, and that, um, that there, is, you know, there is sort of lively debate going on behind the scenes um, and I think it's good to yeah, bring that to the, to the fore for students. So my, my key message um, in the debate was that R2P has made, um, has made real differences to international relations. Um, that it's, it's changed the way we think about mass atrocity crime prevention. Um, there's a much greater understanding of the, the, um, the precursors of mass atrocity crimes now and the steps that can be taken to, to ameliorate those, those situations. Um, I talked about how it's being implemented through the United Nations system with the special advisor on R2P um, and how it's being implemented at state levels as well through um, the R2P focal points across the world. Uh, I argue mm -hmm. that the Responsibility Project hasn't made a difference uh, where it really matters, uh, which is the uh, international community's response to interstate crises. Um, I suggested that the system has stayed the same uh, as it was before R2P, uh, and that the Responsibility Project hasn't tackled the big issue, which is the um, Security Council's very selective um, enforcement of human rights uh, law. Um, well, I think RTP has a really strong future. I think it's, um, it's, 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 not, it's not a revolution, it's incremental change, but it is being embedded throughout UN institutions and becoming part of UN decision making. Um, so I would see it as a, as a longer term sort of normative project um, where it can um, yeah, become one of the, the, um, the parts of state decision making. I think it's, it's a very catchy slogan and it's a, a, a slogan that people will continue to use for, for many years but um, I think it's a practical um, policy option. It has a very limited future and I think the temper um, both in the room and, and, and around the world in the last couple of years has been that uh, it's no longer seen as viable, it's no longer seen as something that is going to make the difference that millions of people around the world um, crave. Uh, I think its future will be as an academic curiosity to a large extent. I don't see it as being a, a practical influence on the behaviour of states. That said, I do hope that the um, discourse that is, you know, is embedded in human rights uh, enforcement and humanitarian intervention, I think that has a very strong future. And hopefully, um, as R2P becomes less uh, important, people will focus on what is, to my mind, uh, the key issue, uh, which is the um, reform of the UN uh, Security Council. Um, I thought the question and answer session was really exciting. Um, I think the, the level of engagement from, from the students who are here today was, was excellent. Um, and I think that um, the UN Association had, had um, made great efforts to make it inclusive via using, by using Twitter um, and Facebook and you know, trying to encourage people to get involved who weren't he able to be here today as well. Um, so I thought the, yeah, the question and answer session was great. Yeah, I thought it was very good. I, uh, I haven't met this Mr. Twitter, but he asked a lot of questions, <laughs> some of them very interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those issues that, you know, I think Jess and I are looking at, we're, we're working in an area that um, does stir emotions. It's, it's, it's quite an emotive uh, topic and, um, you know, it, it, it lends itself to uh, uh, people getting involved and engaging with it. And, you know, you can see that in the room today. Um, I haven't been on a panel or a debate before that's used uh, Twitter or interactive things like that. So. Um, yeah, it was, I thought it went very well, yeah. It's always good for young people to meet young people, you know, so sort of just, I don't know, for, for the fun side of things on, on a number of levels. I mean, that's often overlooked um, when you reach a certain stage of your life, I guess. But uh, these kind of events are useful, like, I think, because, you know, reading a book written by, by me or Jess or some academic is, is quite dry, you know. And when you come here and meet us um, and, and talk to us and see that we're not, you know, aliens and we're not, you know, incredibly uh, uh, super intellectual beings, you know, it's, it hopefully breaks down some of the barriers, you know, that I was like this, I was an undergraduate at one stage, um, and I don't think that um, to write books or to be an academic or to have a voice in the world uh, demands that you, you know, have some extraordinary capacity for independent, independent thinking, you know, some people do, but, you know, we all came from the same uh, area, I think a lot of us, not literally, obviously, but, um, <laughs> you know, hopefully it'll show students that, you know, if, if 
a guy like me from the lanes in Limerick can come out and, and write stuff like this and, and have an opinion. Um, anybody can. So hopefully it'll, it'll inspire people to, to go on and, as I say, um, you know, work towards a better world, really. Thank <laughs> you.